travel and things in association with rugged wear, real people, real clothing, real solutions presents in conversation with. I am your host, David Batsoffen, and today we're chatting to the co-owners of this particular lodge um, in Hoodspread Wildlife Estate. Um, they are Jacques Van Beek and Yolandi Schoen. Is that correct, Yolandi? Have I pronounced your, your surname correctly? Yes, you have, David. It's Yolandi Schoen or Schoen. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to both of you. Um, it's great to see you again. What's the weather like in, in Hoodspread? Uh, we're definitely, it is cloudy, the weather is ominous, it's definitely, there's a chill in the air, so we are expecting that cold weather from Joburg that's uh, coming over the escarpment to reach us by this evening. Fair enough. Tell us a bit about your, your lodge. Let me go back to the images and share those with the viewers, um, he says. So, the name of your lodge, what, is it, what does it mean? It's called, um, it actually means, it's a Sutu word and it means giraffe. Oh, okay. H hence yes. hence some, some uh, pictures that we'll get to in, in a short while. Um, now, and of course, the, the giraffes on the wall on the outside. Yes. Not, to, not to forget warthogs and piglets. Yes. The, the you... iconic sign yeah. for hood spray. Yes. <laughs> How long have you and Yolandi owned this property, uh, Jacques? So we've owned that property just over a year, a year now that we acquired the property. Uh, so uh, last year, what's May now? So it's just, just over a year, actually, that, that we acquired the property. Okay, and, and talk us through it, because the, the property itself, uh, from the outside, doesn't belie what lies on the inside. You know, uh, Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> and, and I think your lodge is the epitome of that. Uh, where, you know, from the outside, when, like, when my wife and I eventually found your lodge, because there are two streets named the same, it gets very confusing. Um, and it confuses the, the Google Maps. The inside is, is spectacular. It truly is. Thank you very much, David. Yes, definitely. Uh, I must say, for the wildlife estate, it is quite deceiving once you're on the outside and then once you open the gate, it goes to the inside. Um, it, it definitely is a little bit of a hidden surprise or a hidden gem, as we like to call it. Um, we really were just inspired by all of our travels, and especially we spent a lot of time in coastal areas and tropical islands living out there. Um, so we wanted to create something that's a little bit, well, cozy, uh, definitely yeah. just for travelers that would simply just spend one or two nights over at our place, either going into Kruger or coming out from Kruger National Park and just exploring the surrounding areas. So we just really wanted to have a nice, cozy, uh, home-like environment where people just feel comfortable at the end of the day, where they can have a nice, comfortable, clean, cozy bed and just have a nice warm shower and just really uh, create an environment that's just really very, very relaxing. We can still just experience the, the bushveld surroundings uh, that the wildlife state has to offer. People don't so, realize that you can often wake at um, Woodspread Wildlife Estate to the sound of warthogs rubbing themselves on the rocks outside. And it's quite an interesting sound because it's not something you're expecting. Bird calls, yes, possibly, but not warthogs. No, definitely not. But it is definitely uh, more of a, a daily waking occurrence. Is, waking up to the sounds of warthogs rubbing themselves <laughs> against the surrounding trees or against the actual buildings, yes. Talking about quirky and eclectic, the, um, your place is, is a place after my own heart. There's very little wasted, as I call it, space. If, if it isn't hanging from the rafters like you can see here, it's up on the walls, <laughs> the trees are full of bits and bobs. Um, and even if you don't want to go anywhere, you can stay and just wander around the property and there's around the next corner or behind the next chair, there's always something to find. Yeah, absolutely. Again, just, just from my travels that we've been all over, we, we, um, Yulani and myself haven't owned a TV ever in our lives, to be honest with you. So we're much more into creating arts and crafts. That's what we keep ourselves busy with most of the time, <laughs> uh, as you can see, and, and hence, uh, we've just collected, you know, beadwork and shells and, and everything from, from, especially from Mozambique, 
and surrounding areas as well, through, traveling through Southern Africa um, that we've created, that, that we've collected all types of memorabilia from there and then create our own little bit of art from that, so just to mm. have those memories um, in, in, our, in our place. And then also just definitely adds up for something interesting around the property um, that's a little bit different than your typical guest house that you would find in a Bushveld estate at the end of the day, um, especially with all the shells. As you know, our nearest coast isn't very near to us at all. <laughs> yeah, well, this is what interested me, and I think I'm, I may have mentioned it to you uh, and to Yolandi. We seem to have lost one one of you. I um, yes, she just had to step out quickly. Yes, sorry. Not uh, not, not, a, not a problem. I just like to keep my, my viewers in the loop as to what is happening in case. Oh, she is. Is back oh, there we yes. go. Now it's, yay, she's back. I thought I thought you were peeved with my pronunciation of your name. Um, so you got it for now. Just just on that note, I was I must I must just digress for a second. I've been watching, and I know you don't have a television, but I was watching the IPL cricket last night. And I thought Bat Soffin was a different, a difficult name to pronounce. But the one referee, I think, had a surname that contained all 26 of the letters of the <laughs> alphabet, plus some that I'd never even heard of. Um, I got as far as Abad, I don't know, Abad Abadu. I really have no idea. And then I gave up. <laughs> and I'm not. People, please don't pick me up for pronunciation. So. We were talking. This is this is the veranda in front of in front of the main building with your bedrooms in the background. Um, tell us how how your property works. And currently, you can sleep four guests. Um, yes, you have two rooms. Um, and do you offer meals, or is it sort of uh, do this for yourself? Because I know the rooms are set up to self cater. Yes, basically, what we offer is breakfast normally. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's so many restaurants around us to actually encourage people to go to the local restaurants and support the little town of Woodspray. Yeah, well that makes sense. And your your breakfasts are they limited to sort of continental, or do you, do you do a hot breakfast as well? Well, we generally do offer hot breakfast as well. So a little bit of a continental breakfast, and then with a the hot breakfast, uh, okay, we do offer as well to to guests. So um, we generally we almost to a point, over cater for breakfast more than anything else. You know, last people want people to be hungry if they do go out all day. <laughs> uh, that's just breakfast food work. And then, obviously, we've got the, the, the braai area or the communal fire pit area as well, where people are welcome to, to have a braai as well, um, okay. should they want to do that in the do, do you not find that if, if you're in your room, that people can get a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'll think of it momentarily, embarrassed if they're going to sit down to a huge meal and you guys are, I don't know, picking away the lettuce leaf and a slice of tomato. Do you <laughs> find that, that your guests say, listen, come sit, crack a beer, have something to eat with so us? We, yeah, we've, we've definitely, I mean, just the type of people that we are, uh, because we're always checking up on our guests just in terms of finding out if they're okay and everything. And obviously, um, you do know I, I love talking, which is a bit of an out of state thing. So <laughs> <laughs> we generally are quite sociable with, with guests, obviously not interfering. We know when when to, yes. to, to say hello to them and, and when to, to, to leave them alone as such. But definitely um, most of our guests, if they are having a bri or they're having out, sitting, having been outside on the veranda, um, you know, they always invite us and want to speak to us as well. And, and we're more than happy to, to chat to them, to go and sit down and have a drink with them whatsoever i mean that's what we did for at the end of the day and that's one of the reasons why we we, we started our own guest house as well is we, we're very very fond of the hospitality industry and of meeting new people and just sharing experiences and, and telling people you know what to do in the surrounding areas and, and talking about travels and just talking about life in general so uh, it's a type of place where we want people to feel at home you know mm. we, we want them to be part of the family at the end of the day that's what it's about for us the other so, thing, the other thing that you've done is that is sneaky, is all your gates tend to slide rather than open and close. Yes. And I rem <laughs> remember Yolandi saying to my wife, "You can step off the balcony here and then slid the the balustrade, yeah. open, <laughs> which quite threw me." Um, yes. The use of color 
is, is I think, part of the charm of, of your property. Uh, people certainly can't be bored. They co certainly can't feel depressed because there is so much brightness. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, the limp chocolates on the bed help as well to, to keep you happy. <laughs> It's definitely those small little, uh, the small little things to lure people in, and it starts with the lint chocolate. That that's me in a nutshell. No, <laughs> I agree with you. I killed mine when I was there. I think my wife saved hers uh, for when we got home, and she didn't bother to share it with me at all. <laughs> yeah. She sort of wanted to go out and, and then, buy my own. Talking, <laughs> talking about brightness, this fascinated yeah. me. So, yeah. so talk, talk me through or talk the viewers through, because I know what it is, uh, what it yeah. is, how it's made, and what it's used for. So what that is, is actually it's a, it's a placemat um, that you have for your, your hot pots or hot plates, that, uh, a table mat that you, that you use for, for hot, um, hot plates and hot pots okay. that you can then use as a serving um, um, area. It's actually made from bottle tops or uh, bottle caps um, mm -hmm. that you get on glass uh, bottles. Mm -hmm. um, so this particular piece, uh, we actually bought that in Mozambique. Uh, mm -hmm. We spent quite a lot of time uh, in Mozambique doing self-drive four by four trips into Mozambique. And uh, we met some phenomenal people out there in the local markets um, over the years that we were there. And this is a particular lady out up in, uh, in Yamban that actually makes these by hand. So they actually use all this, this pot that they have. Um, you can actually buy the, those pots, they sell them per meter. Uh, mm -hmm. And what they've done is, uh, these are from various um, recycled all the cloths that they've actually made these as well. Oh, okay. uh, because uh, the ladies typically wear them as sarongs. So they've mm -hmm. taken the old sarongs and then actually used that material and wrapped um, the bottle caps into mm -hmm. the material actually made that those pieces and it just is I mean if you look at it it's just colors galore it just pops with colors. and yeah. um, I mean especially with a photo from that angle it's a very very intriguing piece actually yeah. that you wouldn't say it's actually just something to place on the table no it puts, definitely um, not. the hot plate or the hot pot there as such but I think it's such a creative way uh, of um, recycling uh, bottle caps and old uh, material as well. Yeah. And then actually, I mean, this, 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 this particular lady is, is feeding her family from that. Mm. Talk, talking yeah. about, about marine stuff, one of the pieces on your wall that fascinated me, where did this come from? Yolandi, you talk to me because Jacques is hogging this conversation. <laughs> well, that's still our amazing weekend safaris that we were on. And um, obviously we are marine guides as well. And we lived a long time in Thailand. And we do love the ocean as well. And, and yeah, it's just a little part of our travels that we try to incorporate in our home and remember all our amazing travels we had. Do, do people ask you about these artifacts or the memorabilia going, why or they can do. we buy this? I haven't got the can you buy, but they definitely ask us about all the things hanging there and where did we get it? And we yeah. definitely get asked a lot. Hmm. Now, now this you you were talking about your place being named after a giraffe. I think this is a fun piece, and I know you told me that this was done by a, an artist who is in the area. Does she sell her work? Um, as far as I know, Cheryl does not sell her work, but she does a lot for friends and that. So oh, okay. um, she's she's done quite a lot for us. Um, the giraffes and then the zebra. We've got zebras bums on the other in the other room that we have. <laughs> so that's definitely definitely colourful as well. Yeah. And yeah, Cheryl is a colourful person and she loves doing these beautiful artworks. So we had to put them in our rooms because they just fit so well into our little <laughs> cozy place. They they do indeed. If people want to get hold of you, um, they want a book. Um, how do they go about it? Where can they find you? Uh, contact numbers, that type of thing? So um, booking.com is, is kind of the, the main um, um, booking page that we do make use of. Uh, alternatively, people can also get hold of us privately uh, on our, our business numbers as well that they can directly book with us. 
Um, I don't know, can I give you my yes, number please. now? No, give the number, please. So uh, the, the current number that they can book directly with us is 084-283-2821. Give us that number once more. So, uh, 084 283 2821. And uh, people can phone us directly or they can drop us a uh, WhatsApp message. Um, so we you can pretty much get hold of us 24 hours, seven days a week. Yeah, but uh, don't people don't find to book for three months' time at two o'clock in the morning. Drunk booking uh, doesn't sort <laughs> of thing, okay? Drunk dialing, yeah. yes, but drunk booking, no. <laughs> No, not typically. Definitely our place is one of those places where it's, it's kind of last minute bookings that people generally book at our places. Okay, so, that's that's fair enough. That number once again, 084-283-2821. Uh, Jacques, Yolanda, thank you so much for chatting to me. It's been an absolute blast. I look forward to seeing you when I'm next in Hoodspray, stopping by, maybe having a cup of coffee with you guys. Thank you very much, David. Definitely looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much, David. Cheers for now. Bye. Bye-bye.